Oh, hello, hello, hello. Just checking to make sure I'm live. <laughs> uh, let's hope so. This is going to be a big day going live to Janome Sewing Machines Facebook page, uh, going live to Janome Canada Facebook page, uh, going live to Janome HQ YouTube channel and Janome America's YouTube channel if I've done it all correctly. <laughs> uh, so yes, let's hope so. I'm just checking notifications to make sure everything is good. Uh, let's double check. So it's wonderful to see I've got visitors. Yes, uh, going live. I'm live. <laughs> Fabulous. You know, I'm always uh, in amazement. I'm not that great when it comes to technology. Unless it's sewing related, then that I can figure out. <laughs> it's uh, technology otherwise that sometimes it's like, hmm, it's a love-hate relationship. But I certainly love technology that we can all get together here and share the Janome love no matter where we are in the world. I just did a uh, Janome Canada uh, Instagram Live at 1 o'clock this afternoon. We had Janome Chile join in, Janome Argentina join in, a viewer from Mexico. It's amazing. All around the world, we share the Janome love. Oh, lovely. And I see, yes, Shirley is here. Oh, thank you so much. Joining me again, lovely. And oh, uh, Raquel from Galveston, Texas. Awesome. It's wonderful to see you all. Oh, Georgette from Indiana. Lovely. It is great to see you all. Thank you, everyone, for so much for joining me today. Yes, I am back live in the Janome Sewing Machines Facebook page. My name is Michael Smith, the National Education Manager of Janome Canada. I'm back from my palatial estate here in Collingwood, Ontario, Canada. I'm about two hours north of Toronto. And yes, I've got lots to share with you today. Some embroidery tips and tricks. You know, last week... I stitched out this cute little heart flies valentine. And yes, uh, happy Valentine's Day for everybody. Oh, and Anne is here from Sudbury, Ontario. Hello, hello. So yes, you know, again, this was our plain embroidery design. But then, of course, I added this little uh, felt piece on the back to create like a little pouch that we could stick in some little Valentine's goodies. Or again, you can add your own lettering, be mine, or, you know, a name. So this is a free embroidery pattern you can find on uh, janome.ca or janome.com in the inspire tab and you can go back to janome sewing machines facebook page uh, last week and review that presentation or again now i'm streaming live to our multiple platforms so you can check out janome america's youtube janome hq youtube uh, janome canada facebook janome america facebook again we're all just here to share the janome love so Let's get into, oh, I'll move my ring light out of the way here. Uh, and I definitely have lots of moving parts and pieces here. So I'm going to spin this around. Ooh. So then, yes, we don't see as much as my messy sewing room. But yeah, so embroidery, little tips and tricks. Some of this came about from uh, last week's presentation. I've had a couple of questions. So yes, and then of course there's always more. Now I am using the beautiful Continental M17 here, CM17, but uh, these embroidery tips and tricks will really apply to any, basically almost every Janome machine out there. So yes, our cute little heart flies valentine that you can make into a cute little goodie pouch uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, but yes, our embroidery machine set up. Oh, what do we want to do? Well, I always suggest before you begin an embroidery project, we're going to get in there with the little brush included with our machines and uh, clean out our bobbin area. Very important to get rid of all that dust and debris and all that lint. That'll definitely affect the stitch quality in sewing and in embroidery. So give it a good clean. Now, included in a number of machines is a little vial, and it says cleaner. And it's specifically paraffin distillate. It is not oil. So if your machine came with this little vial, it's cleaner paraffin distillate specifically, and you can uh, double check with your Janome dealer to get more. You're going to put a little drop. After you clean all the lint out, you're just going to put ooh, a little drop 
or two, again, not much. I love a t-shirt. If you've made a t-shirt quilt and you've got the sleeves and the little extra leftover there, their t-shirt rag is perfect to clean this with a little bit of that paraffin distillate in and around your bobbin area here. The t-shirt rag, since it's been you know used and laundered many times, it's uh, like no lint, so that's good. We certainly don't want more down there. And we're gonna use some of that paraffin distillate again, just to wipe off our bobbin holder as well, that we know we can safely use it with the resin of the bobbin holder and it's not gonna do anything to break down. We really don't wanna use chemicals to clean all of this because uh, we don't want anything interacting with the bobbin holders. So there, a nice clean machine, perfect. Now, speaking of bobbin holders, in a number of our machines, we've often heard of the yellow dot bobbin holder. But here with the Continental M17, it's actually a white dot. So Janome, in their infinite wisdom, has been uh, adding in the actual grams of the bobbin holder because they're of different uh, tensions, basically. So in here, this uh, in the CM17, it's more of a white dot, uh, but in your other uh, Janome embroidery machines, it may actually be a little yellow triangle that is a high tension bobbin holder. And specifically, it's 20 grams. It may be hard with the lighting to see, <laughs> but it's 20 grams. So this is a higher tension. And we definitely, when we're embroidering, we want to pull those needle threads to the bobbin side. We don't want the bobbin thread coming up to the top. So we will often use this high tension bobbin holder. Now, however, if we're using Janome bobbin thread or Janome pre-wound bobbins, we can get away with using the regular 10 grams which is the regular, oh, there you can see a little bit, 10 grams, it's in the bobbin basket. Again, this Janome's doing this with newer machines. Uh, 10 grams, though, is the, the standard bobbin holder. And again, in, in most machines, it's a red dot or a little triangle, it'll be red. But here, again, in Continental M7 and CM17, uh, you know, they're different, they're special, so they get their own color. Uh, so yes, if we're using Janome, Oh, pre-wound bobbins. I love getting mine in a 108 pack in white or in black. So again, double check with your Janome dealer what they have. But oh yes, you can get lots of pre-wound bobbin thread. Or here we've got black in a 12 pack or white as well. Pre-wound with our Janome thread and it has a Janome J bobbin in the middle. Now, if you aren't using Janome pre-wounds, then you can always get your fabulous Janome J bobbins, which has the J in the center post of the bobbin. And why we have that there is to indicate that the Janome J bobbins have a rubberized compound in them. So that helps the Machines stay a little quieter, especially when embroidering at high speeds. Uh, it'll also stop the bobbin when we're going to stop and change colors or when we're regular sewing, we're sewing at high speeds and we stop all of a sudden. The rubberized compound in the bobbin will definitely uh, help. Oh, does Janome do pre-wounds for the 9850? Oh yes, absolutely. The The wonderful thing about Janome pre-wound bobbins, they're uh, the class 15 size if you're using a non-Janome bobbin, but we always recommend use Janome branded products. We know they're gonna work beautifully. So we recommend Janome bobbins in your machine and almost every Janome sewing machine and embroidery machine will take the same bobbins. It doesn't matter if it's entry level or top of the line, they will almost all take the same bobbins. So that is wonderful. So the pre-wounds definitely help, Janome pre-wounds. Uh, or again, if you're going to wind your own, get your Janome J bobbins. Oh, we still have some of our 100th anniversary special pink bobbins, or we're just celebrating 75 million machines since 1921. So isn't that amazing? So whatever your color preference. <laughs> and again, they all have that rubberized compound in them. So the bobbins are a little quieter in the machine. They'll stop on a dime. And then if you drop them on the floor, uh, they won't break as easily. <laughs> so that is good.
So again, in this case, I'm going to use my 10 gram because I am going to use Janome J bobbin, uh, pre-wound bobbins. Now, when we are installing this bobbin holder in our machine, we really want to make sure, do you see this little, there's a little metal finger and just behind it on my bobbin holder, there's a little uh, resin, it's not plastic. The bobbin holders are not plastic, but it's a resin. Uh, but there is a thumb, basically. So the thumb of the bobbin holder is going to be behind this metal finger that's down in the bobbin area. And you want to make sure that that metal finger is out and that thumb of the bobbin holder is behind it. Because as I rock this back and forth, my bobbin holder is not going anywhere. So sometimes if you put your bobbin holder in and if you don't align this up, and this is what that little arrow is on your bobbin holder, and there's a little arrow here on this metal stopper where that metal finger is, those arrows are supposed to align. If they do not, your bobbin holder is not in the right area. I also like to run my finger around it to make sure it's all flat. And again, it's locked into place. It's not going anywhere. So that will help. Will this be recorded and posted to the Facebook group? But yes, absolutely. If you can't watch the live, then it will uh, remain in the uh, Janome Sewing Machines and Janome Canada uh, Facebook feed. Now, when we're embroidering, instead of the zigzag needle plate, which has that big opening in the middle, we recommend using the straight stitch needle plate that has that center hole and then the two holes, one to the right and one to the left. But we like using the straight stitch needle plate for embroidery. So that'll help prevent the needle, you know, pushing the fabric down into the needle plate. So use the straight stitch needle plate for embroidery. And boom, that just locks into place in my CM17. Always, again, for our top loading machines, we're going to form the letter P, lowercase p. So we think of P for precision or P for perfect. So in our front loading sewing machines, it's uh, the reverse. It's uh, going clockwise. But in all of our embroidery machines, those are all top loading machines um, other than uh, oh, the MB4 and MB7. But in the uh, domestic class of machines, yes, we're going to form the letter P and then uh, thread our bobbin uh, according to our machine's instruction manual. Let me clear my deck because, oh, I have so much to show you. So then, yes, when we talked about, oh, there's either pre-wound bobbins or, yes, uh, maybe your machine came with either a little spool like this or a cone of Janome bobbin thread. And if your machine came with this and you need more or if you would like to use more, you can get from your Janome dealer. So, yes, then our Janome bobbin thread, if you're winding your own using this thread, we can use the 10 gram bobbin holder, the regular bobbin holder. We don't need that uh, special high tension bobbin holder when we're using the Janome bobbin thread or the Janome pre-wound bobbins. And again, that is in your instruction manual as well. Uh, for needles, Janome recommends using a Janome blue tip size 11 needle that has a slight ballpoint on the end. So that will help uh, in your embroidery not make a significant hole in the fabric. But a lot of the times if we've got oh, a really dense embroidery design or again maybe thicker fabric or more layers of stabilizer, we like using the red tip size 14 Janome needle that has a sharper point and a larger eye so we can use slightly thicker thread if we wish. Uh, but mainly that it's got the nice sharp point and it's got a thicker shaft so it'll go through those thicker layers uh, very easily. So either the blue tip Janome blue tip or Janome red tip are the two needles that we recommend the most for embroidery. If we're doing quilting in our embroidery machine, oh, I still like using my purple tip needle, <laughs> Janome purple tip. And again, you can get your Janome needles from your Janome dealer. So yes, then let me get this ready to go for embroidery. Uh, now, when we talk about thread, 
in the upper portion of our machine. Whoops. How about, oh, you know, there is a thread stand for pretty much every Janome machine out there. And I love using it on the Continental M17. Of course, we have a thread stand, a spool stand. Or this is what I used in my 15,000 and my uh, Memory Craft 550E. Now, it will attach to the back of the machine, but I just put it over the handle of each of those machines. I never attached it into the machine. There are holes, though, and there are screws in the back of your machines. If they will be compatible with the spool stands, you'll already have the screws in the back of your machine. Uh, but again, on mine, the uh, 550E and the 550E LE and the Memory Craft 15,000, I just put this spool stand over my handle and it worked beautifully. Now, the thread stands we love, not only especially five spools, we can load up our color in order. That'll really save you a lot of time when you're going to change your thread color for the various designs. But also, oh yes, you'll see like this Mylar thread it's not even really thread. It's more like a little piece of plastic. Uh, some of these, I call them finicky threads. They can be really difficult to use. But your spool stand will definitely help. It gives you more area. This is a big telescoping. Ooh, yeah, it's a big telescoping thread stand. So this gives you more room for this thread to uncurl and relax. The same with metallic thread here. I love using the thread stands. Again, more room for the uh, thread to relax before it gets into the tension. So you'll have less thread breakage. Now you'll see how the thread stands come with the extra spool caps. And I make uh, one spool cap as a little shelf and I bring that spool up higher. I do that to eliminate this spool pin. Now using the correct spool cap will definitely make a big difference to avoid your thread wrapping around that spool pin. But I like just to, and it, it's a little extra insurance, <laughs> I like to really make sure that I'm not gonna wrap around that spool pin. If you have a jam and your bobbin holder slips and moves, it's probably because the thread either came out of the take-up lever or maybe it's wrapped around the spool pin. And at high speeds, it just jams. Uh, so by avoiding, again, the correct spool cap, so it's bigger than the top of your spool of thread, and by avoiding that spool pin, you will definitely alleviate a lot of threading woes. Now, if you don't have a whole big spool for a color, let's say it's a color you don't really use that much or it's not big in your design, how about a bobbin that you already have wound and you want to use up that thread well again a correct spool cap i put made a little shelf here and then that way i eliminate a lot of the spool pins so we could use the bobbin even in our needle to do some embroidery the thread stands do come with these big cone adapters so even big cones of thread we can use with the thread stands again with those cone adapters or, and as well, with our uh, spool stands, the thread nets. Now, these also come available in a separate blister pack. I love using them, particularly metallic threads. And we just tuck the thread net under the spool. And then again, the thread comes right off the top of the spool perfectly. This thread net helps prevent it from puddling around the bottom of the spool. It comes off so beautifully. We would thread it through this guide and then down to the machine. And again, by having that extra space of that thread stand, the thread uncurls and relaxes a little more before it hits the tension. So again, less thread breakage. So you can use pretty much any thread in your embroidery machine, but again, some little ooh, tips and tricks will help. Now there's more about threading on the Janome Life blog, whoops, and of course we have uh, oh lots of various uh, Janome sewing machine Facebook lives to go back to. Our fabulous Celine, who does every Tuesday, she's done a lot about thread. Now, so we're finally getting ready to oops, getting ready to unlock our machine and get sewing here. So we are already oops, already in our embroidery mode here very simply or again maybe you've got a 550e that is embroidery dedicated uh, embroidery machine 
Uh, yes, but here we go. So when I am in embroidery, and let's go to the little file folder here at the bottom. Uh, last week when I did that cute little heart flies design, it was in a file folder here with the arrow out. That is a free design from Janome.com or Janome.ca in the Inspire tab. And I put it on a USB stick, which is plugged into the side of my machine here, the CM17, we have two USB ports. So when we're finding our design, we want to make sure we select the correct source. I've got uh, the USB number one there, and it's in my downloads folder, and we can scroll through to find that design. And again, there's more ooh, on Genomi Life blog about how to transfer designs. And again, there's been a ton of um, previous videos, presentations that you can go back to review about transferring designs. So then here, boom, our carriage is going to move. And there is our cute little design. Now in the CM17, we have 1,230 designs, but again, we can always find more and transfer it with the USB stick, or we do have uh, wireless capabilities here in the CM17, but other machines are not wireless. So I generally do um, the USB stick just to keep it consistent and that way I can use any machine. But so here is our design. Now the machine will tell us, and no matter what Janome embroidery machine you have, it'll say, you know, what size your design is. In this case, there's four colors, uh, how long it'll take to stitch out. There's our colors, everything. Uh, we can go down here into these three stacked spools there's the list of our colors. These are all Janome uh, embroidery colors, or actually, no, I had changed them to Helis Iris uh, Polyester Bright because in our settings, now I'm going to jump around, <laughs> in our settings, which is that little cog, we can go to the hoop here is our embroidery settings, and we can scroll through now, when people ask about thread, what do we use in our machine? Well, the default is Janome polyester thread, but here are some other uh, thread color charts that are built into the machine, including that iris polyester. I use that a lot too. But again, other brands too. And yes, you can add in your own individual thread colors, uh, which I'll show you in a minute if I get time, because as usual, it's already flying by. So then that's how we can select various colors. So yes, the default is the Janome embroidery threads. And there that lists all of our threads. But when we go into our edit mode up here with the little pencil, oh, now we can do various things like, oh, this big piece of paper and the little piece of paper we can shrink our design up to 20% or we can increase it up to 20% in most cases. Uh, this little uh, arrows that are going around in a circle, well, as you would imagine, that's to rotate the design. So isn't that cool? There's so much creativity. From a stock design, there's so much more you can do with it. So how about I just move it here? when we've got our touchscreen LCD screen, or then we've got our little cursor buttons here as well. So that's a good way to move the design. And then this little uh, four hearts there, I click, boom, that's our four cornering tool. So there we've got four designs in each corner. Isn't that very cool? And I love how all of these put together, it forms another, and it's almost like a big flower to me. So I think that's very, very cool. So there's so much you can do. And the great thing that no matter what Janome embroidery machine you have, all of these functions are the same. So if this is what you would like to do and you say, okay, great, I'm going to stitch this out. We hit okay. And it just uh, tells us to think for a minute, but let's look at, oh, our colors. They're now 16. There were four. Now let's look at this chart. Oh, it's getting bigger. And again, let's go down to these three stacked spools. Look at that. All of a sudden I had four and now I have 16. Oh, that's gonna take way too long. That's gonna be a lot of thread changes even with the convenience of that spool uh, stand. So we go into back into our edit mode 
and we go into color sorting, which is these two spools. And there's a light box and a little dark box and a light box and a dark box. So that represents, again, we're going to combine all these colors. Instead of the design right now, the way it is, it's, it's going to stitch out this design. And then it's going to stitch out this design. And then this one and this one. But that's a lot of color changes. So by color sorting it, we're going to group all this light pink together and then we're going to group all this white together and then all the darker pink and then all the black so that way we're not changing our thread colors as much so we click here and click OK, and that's going to unify everything together. Oh, yes, and says all the videos are saved to Facebook page. Yes, you could save it to your videos list. Yes, and Anne has done a lot of videos on all of this information, too. And again, as our fabulous Celine. So, yeah, lots of resources available. So there we have done our color sorting. And look, now it's back to four colors. It'll definitely save a lot of time. Uh, let's go back into our settings here, our cog, into our embroidery hoop there, into our settings, and make sure that that consecutive color grouping is turned on in order for you to do that. So if it doesn't work, maybe that's not switched on, that's in your function, or in your settings. And always click OK to make sure that it's saved. So there, that color sorting will definitely save you a lot of time. We're back to four colors. Now, basting is something else I wanted to talk about, as is this precision marker, this PM foot that you'll see with that little bullseye. I have it on my machine. The PM foot is this little light that shines down on our embroidery hoop to help us line up our design. Or maybe you've got a thread break and you want to go back to the exact spot. So this PM precision marker will help you. But many people say, oh, well, I have it on. In fact, it's on my machine right now. It looks very similar to the regular P foot, but it has, it's the PM foot. It has this extra little bit that shines a light down. There's like a little camera eye there and it shines a light down to help us indicate the needle drop position. So nothing is happening right now, even though there's a port on the back of the machine and it's plugged in. But in order to activate the PM foot, you must press this little bullseye. So here's a little bullseye up next to the foot. You must hit that little bullseye there. Now it is selected. And then, oh, I hope you can see there. Do you see that little illuminated dot there? Now that is the center when my hoop is in place. Right now my hoop is not in place. But when it's in place, again, that is to indicate where your needle is. Typically at the beginning, it's the center of your design. But again, it can be wherever if you need to back up your thread for a thread break. But it needs to be on switched here once you start embroidering it's going to turn off on its own it doesn't stay illuminated it only illuminates when you select it so that's a little tip about your pm foot uh and another thing is oh you may see here ghosted is a little symbol of basting for example and here's this icon of like the hoop and there's an arrow and over here is typically basting now again uh any kind of modern genome embroidery machine in the last oh you know 10 20 years has the basting function where is it well we learned with the cm17 it's a very smart intuitive machine the Embroidery hoop has to be engaged into this fabulous cup link. I love how these hoops attach. Look at that. With one hand, I just slid it in and you hear it click to release. Boom. That's it. So if you've got any carpal tunnel, any dexterity issues, arthritis, boom, click. Make sure it's all the way in. So then, yes, back on our LCD screen here, there is the icon for based. Now, the first uh, symbol here is to trace around the design, trace around the, the hoop. And that's always a good thing to do before you begin embroidering, 
because then it's going to move all around. So you want to make sure that, yes, your hoop can move freely. Nothing is around. Believe me, I have started embroidering and all of a sudden, oh, I forgot there's that stuff behind my table. And as I'm embroidering, then all that stuff goes knocking or it knocks my embroidery hoop out of alignment. Yes, we can go back to fix our designs, but that's a lot more trouble. So let's just take one second and uh, make sure that nothing is impeding the embroidery hoop when we go to stitch. So that's always a, a tip I love sharing. Uh, again, I learned the hard way. <laughs> so we can trace it, but then this base, we've got an outer base. And then this one, we have two rows of basting, an outer and an inner base. So when we have our fabric, particularly this is floated, this isn't hooped in the embroidery hoop. And typically I, I don't hoop my fabric if I can avoid it. <laughs> so I will hoop the stabilizer and you can see I've got the magnets here holding the stabilizer, it's all folded up. This could be my fabric as well that I like using the magnets there to hold the fabric. But if you've got especially extra fabric over or extra stabilizer, whatever, I like using these little bulldog clips to make sure, have you ever been embroidering and sometimes either the stabilizer folds over or your fabric folds over and you don't realize it till afterwards. So this way I like, you know, bulldog clipping it all together because we've got our magnets, which are great, but out here, you know, this could flip over, this could flip under. So I always like to keep it up out of the place, out of the way. So then I've got, yes, my felt here, my fabric, especially, oh, velvet or fur that I don't want to crush that nap. Then we can uh, put uh, over floating and we use the base to hold it down. So when we hit our stop start button, as a tip to keep your basting thread, sometimes people say, oh, the thread doesn't uh, catch when I start basting. What I will often do, as I just did, I held it as I was going along, or, you know, at the side of our Janome machines, we have a front to back is a thread holder, back to front is a thread cutter. So I will often hold up my threads here, so then it will not uh, get loose. You know, sometimes that basting stitch, again, it's a nice big stitch, so it's easy to remove later. But sometimes people say, oh, it doesn't catch and it doesn't start, um, it'll stitch, but it doesn't, the actual stitch doesn't form. <laughs> so uh, either hold onto your thread, hang it up in that thread holder, or what I will often do is as soon as it's about to start, it'll go into the home position, it'll start up on the top right, and then I hit stop. So then I can bring up the bobbin thread and then you hold on to that bobbin thread so it doesn't uh, go out of place. Now, another really quick tip. Oh, I love these cute little four inch mini duckling scissors. Now you'll see they're offset, they're cantilevered like this. So we can again, get right down into the embroidery hoop. These handles aren't gonna hit the hoop. These are great for in the hoop applique projects great to trim all these little bits of thread they really get in there the nice uh, point nice sharp point and again it's got that duck bill so then it's not going to especially for in the hoop applique it's not going to trim that lower layer of fabric so these i absolutely love we do have a six inch pair as well but these four inch mini ducklings are really really cute now, very quickly, I wanted to go through, again, ooh, custom base. And again, Anne has done another presentation of this uh, a while ago that was really, really good. But custom base, basically, it's on our higher-end machines like CM17. I believe Skyline S9 has it as well. Uh, the Memorycraft 15000 had it. Now, you'll see here, as I did my big B mine, and yes, with our RE46D hoop, giant hoop for the CM17, you'll see that, yes, I've got my outer basting line for my felt here, but then all these inner lines, these are all custom based inner lines. So again, depending on what our design is, what our fabric is, you can totally customize, ooh, as you wish. 
So with our custom base, basically then we will hit A is gonna be our top corner as indicated on the screen. And then we use our jog, oops, sorry. We use our jog dials here, our little jog keys to move it down and over from where it would be. So again, depending on, maybe we've got really, uh, ooh, uh, slippery fabric and we've got a, a really dense design and we wanna make sure nothing moves. So we've done our top corner and then now we're gonna do B, our bottom corner. And again, we can just move it wherever we wish. And you'll see the numbers here moving. So again, we can totally customize however we wish. I'll just move that over there. And then we'll see as we press stop start, our carriage will move and away we go. Hold on to that thread or again, hang it up. So then this is custom based. Basically you can create kind of any uh, stitch around any other shape. It doesn't always have to be just that outer and inner center. You can customize and stitch these uh, custom baselines wherever you need. In this case, I just did Again, there was our center, there's our outside, this is custom based. Uh, you could see maybe I was testing earlier, I did another custom base here in red and then thought, oh, you can't see that red on red. <laughs> so again, you could really do a lot to really help tack down your fabric so it's not moving anywhere. Make sure, of course, you use the correct stabilizer. And again, there's been lots of Genomi Life blogs and lots of videos all about the stabilizers that you can use. So let me go in here. As usual, time. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> time has been flying by. There's actually more I was going to share, but again, the time just goes by so fast. So we'll just have to do it again. How about that? Yes, I absolutely have absolutely loved you all being here. The comments, thank you so much for the comments. I will get back to those that I couldn't read. Uh, back to, you know, make sure that we're answering questions. And I know Anne is on. Thank you. It's great to see you, Anne. So she's always a great uh, resource of information too. But thank you everyone so much for joining me. And oh, I'll see you next week in the Genomi Continental Club Facebook Live uh, Friday at 3 p.m. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a fabulous day. Bye. <laughs>